Your Excellency, Mr. President, I have the honor to present to you letters of credence signed by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, who is Queen and Head of State of the Independent State of Papua New Guinea, making me the first High Commissioner of the Independent State of Papua New Guinea to Republic of South Africa. Excellency, I have the honor to present to you the letters of recall of my predecessor and the letters by which His Excellency President Dr. Anes Baikuruma has appointed me as Ambassador and High Commissioner of the Republic of Sierra Leone to the Republic of South Africa. And I will also use this opportunity to convey his sincere greetings to you and appreciation for your support to Sierra Leone during the Ebola era. And now we've defeated Ebola thanks to your support and other support from the international community. And then I also use this opportunity to convey his message to you that Your Excellency should reactivate the tripartite agreement between Sierra Leone and South Africa regarding the Cuban doctors. Thank you. Thank you very much, Excellency. Thank you very much. Yes. I bring you a message of friendship and best wishes of continued well-being and prosperity for you and your nation in the future. With these words, I bring you to you the letter of recall of my predecessor and my letter of credentials. We indeed welcome you to this beautiful land during a significant year in the history of our nation. The year 2016 marks 20 years since the signing of our Constitution as the supreme law of the Republic by the then President and internationally revered statesman, President Nelson Mandela. Dada Madeva, as he was <clears throat> affectionately known, stated during the signing of the Constitution that, and I quote, as we close a chapter of exclusion and a chapter of heroic struggle, we reaffirm our determination to build a society of which each of us can be proud as South Africans, as Africans, and as citizens of the world." Unquote. I can confidently state that the checks and balances encapsulated in our Constitution have contributed to the vibrancy and strength of our young democracy. Furthermore, we are gathered here during an important month in the history of our continent. On the 25th May 2016, which is Africa Day, we will join our fellow Africans on the continent and the diaspora in paying homage to the founders of an independent African continent. These are our forebears who established the Organization of African Unity, <clears throat> known for short as OAU, the <clears throat> to the African Union, known for short as AU. I'm pleased to invite you to join us as we celebrate Africa Month through various activities leading up to the actual African Day and beyond. 
As you may be aware, the Africa Month program was launched on the 3rd May 2016. This is a further testimony to the importance we attach to Africa's prosperity and our collective aspirations contained in Agenda 2063, the Africa we want. Your Excellencies, South Africa, like all other developing nations, could not emerge unscathed from the turbulent global economic conditions following the 2008 economic crisis. The world economy continues to experience sluggish growth. We have put measures in place to ensure that our economy's resilience is <clears throat> sustained. In this regard, I appointed an interministerial committee in January this year to further support and assist investors to leverage existing trade and investment opportunities in our country. In the recent past, I dispatched a team of South Africans led by the Minister of Finance to interface with investors abroad. These efforts, among others, have started yielding positive results. We have also worked very hard to ensure that our energy constraints are addressed so that industries can keep on functioning in order to save jobs and strengthen economic stability. Our efforts towards the green economy through energy mix were boosted by the approval of the first tranche of projects by the Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa BRICS New Development Bank. <clears throat> This is a critical step forward towards the realization of the BRICS mandate of providing financial support for infrastructure and sustainable development. Your Excellencies, I must highlight that this bank will not limit infrastructure projects and sustainable development support to its membership only. It will, however, serve as an alternative to traditional international financial institutions such as the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, <clears throat> IMF for short, and serve all interested partners across the globe. The IMF team, which recently visited our country, pronounced its confidence that South Africa's economy will soon be on a growth trajectory. This follows the past weekend's affirmation of our current investor rating. I have regularly met with business and labor to review progress and collectively chart a way forward. To further consolidate our work in this area, Deputy President Cyril Ramaphosa is currently leading a delegation to Rwanda to participate in the World Economic Forum for Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, 
we have a shared responsibility to create enabling global conditions for sustainable development. This includes ensuring that we pursue our collective commitment to project <clears throat> to protect the planet from degradation as contained in the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. In this regard, South Africa will commence in earnest with its national processes to ratify the Paris Climate Change Agreement. We would like to urge the other 170 for UN member states that signed the agreement on the 22nd April 2016 to also embark on their national ratification processes. We are conscious of all other challenges faced by our people, which can indeed limit our endeavors bolster prosperity. These include continued instability in some parts of the world, increased acts of terrorism and rising extremism, among others. We shall spare no energy in addressing these challenges. And I believe that working together as partners, we can create a better world for all. Ladies and gentlemen, we are appreciative of the role your people and governments play during our struggle for democracy and justice. You have also encouraged us to play a leading role in various international forums since the advent of our democracy. It is because of your continued support and cooperation that South Africa was recently conferred the, distinct, the Distinguished <clears throat> Diplomatic Service Award by the World Affairs Council in Washington, D.C. for, and I quote, outstanding commitment to global education, international affairs, and global communications, unquote. We wish to share this accolade with you and all other partners in the world. I welcome you once again to South Africa and trust that you will enjoy your stay in this country. Take your time to travel across the country to appreciate the beauty of our country, what it offers naturally as well as people, as well as this very unusual position of <clears throat> enjoying two oceans, the Indian Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean, <clears throat> and see where they meet, <clears throat> these two. We certainly look forward to working with all of you as we strengthen relations in pursuit of a better Africa and a better world. Thank you very much indeed.